On the 29th of July, 2001, I, Fox Akimbo, made the world's first Do Not Research Iceberg video. Here's to say that in the last three months, it has taken my channel to new levels, with it being far and away my most watched video. Here's the thing though, I hate it. I hate that video so much. It's really bad. The audio quality is awful. Half of the video is out of focus. Quite frankly, I am embarrassed. The things I talked about, the topics that I covered, gave me a stiff uppercut in the first round. And once again, I must don on the boxing gloves and put up a fight for round two. If you know me, please watch no further because the topics I get into in this video are going to be beyond terrible. They're going to be straight up disturbed. We're going to start off with some stuff which is maybe a bit unsettling, but as we go down, there are some things here that I will never be able to unsee. If you know me, please click away. And if you're not ready to deal with the disturbing topics that I'm about to cover, please do click off the video. And so without further ado, this is the Do Not Research Iceberg Revisited. Up first today, we have two Two girls, one cup. And I think that I might have spoken about this topic before. I'm not entirely sure, but I think I have. I think that it was the disturbing content iceberg. I think I spoke about it. But if you don't know, this was one of the internet's earliest viral videos. And it contains two women engaging in various coprophilic activities, which is like kind of poo. <laughs> they got some scat play going on, like straight up. They got some scat thing going on, scat play. And the likelihood is that you already know about this because it's the internet's like most famous early viral video of disgustingness. And this is one that you shouldn't look into, but I actually probably bet the chances are you might have because curiosity killed the cat. I know you might. Like I, I've definitely tried to see what the fuss is about and it's gross. I can't watch any more than like five seconds. Either way, I recommend don't do it, and I'm going to move on. Dolphins. I mean, this one might get a couple of people a bit confused. This is something that I do hate to break to you, but dolphins are evil mother Straight up, they are evil. We all love dolphins. We do. We love dolphins. But from an unbiased perspective, this should be an animal that we actually hate. They are one of the most intelligent animals behind humans. They might even be the most intelligent. They're definitely up there with one of the most intelligent animals in the world, but they are also one of the most evil. I think humans have probably the greatest capability to be evil, you know, because we choose to do it. Dolphins also choose to be evil sometimes. They rape and murder legitimately for fun. This is just something better not to know because nothing can be done about it. It's not like we're gonna round up dolphins and put them in prison because they choose to rape and murder. There's nothing we can do. We can't impose sanctions on them. They're dolphins. So they're evil and it's just a way of life that evil kind of creeps its way into nature. It's a harrowing fact and probably one that a lot of people, if you didn't know before, don't really want to know, but it is a fact of life. There is an idea that if you were to take a great ape and shave him down, you would see something that looks like a human. Well, this next entry is similar to that because this is the hairless chimpanzee. If you were to shave a chimp down, this is what you would see. And in a real life Planet of the Apes, humans would get absolutely massacred more than they do in the movie. We would not stand a chance. Look at the muscles on that <laughs> Even still, we are so high up on the iceberg, so let's keep on moving so we can start to slowly move down and get to the more disturbing tears. Peter Griffin saves the whales. This one is literally just disturbing for disturbing sake. It's very graphic, very violent. Maybe the humor's gone over my head, I don't know. But yeah, this is a scene in Family Guy in which Peter mutilates a dead whale for a good, what, minute and a half? Like 90 seconds. There is no joke. It's just him mutilating it further and further. It's quite violent, quite graphic. And there, that's the joke. He's just mutilating a dead whale, worse and worse, unintentionally brutalizing its corpse. And, and that's it, that's meant to be funny. At least in my opinion, it's not. Uh, I don't really care though. And yeah, this one's just graphic, a little bit violent, but it's not too bad, so we will move further down. The next one should be self-explanatory. Spoilers. It goes without saying, don't research spoilers. You will ruin the viewing experience for yourself. One of the best things that can happen in any TV show, movie, book, whatever you want to say, is a surprise in the story. And if you go around researching spoilers, you're going to get it ruined for yourself. Not knowing what's going to happen is part of the fun, at least in my experience. So 
you know, don't research spoilers, goes without saying, let's get to the next one. The Splinter, this is the episode of Spongebob where <laughs> Spongebob gets a splinter. And again, this is more just disturbing content. We will get to the more disturbing stuff as we go down. Don't worry, hold tight. This is similar to the Family Guy whale thing, except this is an entire episode instead of like just one minute. The concept is that SpongeBob has a splinter on his thumb and then he just kind of makes it bigger. He tries to make it better and he makes it worse. So it basically is the exact same as the Family Guy. It just doesn't work. It's not funny. There's no real story with emotional grippage to it. It's just through various hijinks. SpongeBob gets a splinter and then he makes it worse before it gets better. He just pulls it out, bang, and then it's like pus goes everywhere. It's kind of gross. Like I would say don't research it just because it's a bad episode straight up. I don't have anything else to say about it. So let's keep on going. Tonsil stones. All right, now we're getting into things. This is something that you shouldn't really research just because it's grim. And this is something I think I used to have when I was like five or six, potentially. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I do remember something similar. And so what tonsil stones are, it's like this buildup of dead cells and saliva and mucus at the back of your throat. And this kind of builds up on the tonsils and it makes this stone-like thing. See, kidney stones is quite rough. I mean, kidney stones is worse, but you should definitely not look up tonsil stones because they are grim. And it's just something that you shouldn't really look into. Don't do it. I would recommend against it. Vor. This is the first thing on the list that I didn't know what this was. And I'm sure that a bunch of you that have been around the internet for a while probably do. Those of you who might frequent DeviantArt or those of you who might kind of frequent, I don't know, fanfic pages and stuff. Those of you who go down to the dark side of the internet, you probably do know what Vor is. I was unaware, but in case you don't, let me inform you. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, Vor is the sexual attraction to eating or being eaten by someone, right? So someone eats you and then you're like in their stomach or potentially you eat someone else and then they're like trapped inside you. This would freak me out if I haven't done one of these before. This is straight up deviant, all right? If you were, I don't know, this is like a cannibal kind of thing. I don't think so. I don't, I could not explain this if I tried and I have tried to write about it. I just can't. I, I just can't. Having seen pictures of Vor, sometimes I'll look up a character online and I used to think it was some sort of pregnancy fetish, but it might actually be Vor. I just don't understand it. I don't understand it. And humans are weird. We've established that by now. They are weird. I have no words for this. I'm going to move on. <laughs> what were the Velociraptor noise in Jurassic Park? So if you really, really like Jurassic Park, I hate to break it to you if you don't already know this. If Jurassic Park was a childhood classic to you, skip this entry because I'm about to ruin something. The Velociraptors, the noise for them was straight up tortoises banging, all right? Tortoises mating calls and sex. That was their noises. I don't think I have anything else to say about that. So let's move on. If I were to ask you, what is this thing? What is this thing right here? It's a cursed picture for sure, but I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. This, my friends, is a shaved polar bear. Obviously it's cursed, but that's what it is. Let's move on. We're starting to kind of accelerate a little bit here. This is starting to get a little bit darker. Chase No Face is a cat which, when it was a kitten, was hit by a car. The cat survived, but due to the accident, its face was severely deformed. And it's just sad to see. It's sad to see this kind of thing happen to an animal. Uh, it really wasn't the cat's fault, I'm sure. I don't think I'll be able to show a picture of the cat, but whilst we're on the lighter topics, this is an artist's rendition of the cat. So... Yeah, it's it's such a shame. It is a shame, but so is life. Gavage is up next, or maybe Gavage. I'm not too sure how to pronounce this word. And according to the iceberg, this is how fragua is made. Long story short, this is the process of fattening up an animal by putting a feeding tube down its throat and force feeding it a bunch of food to fatten it up. Fragua is ducks and geese, so they'll just take those and they'll put a feeding tube down it basically torturing it a bit until it's fat enough to be eaten. Even still, for me, this foie gras does cross the line. It's kind of a disturbing way to think that this is how some 
ducks and geese and any animal, for example, that are subjected to gavage or gavage are treated in their last couple of days and weeks. Nature is sometimes weird. And if you looked at the last video, I mistook the turkey mating ritual for something else. I apologize, but I think I've got this one right. This is the giraffe mating ritual. And straight up, the giraffe mating ritual is clapped, all right? So TLDR, the giraffe's mating ritual includes the male and he goes up to the woman and he will taste her urine. And that's the big thing, I think, that the male will go up to the female and will drink her urine because they just love piss play. Like they absolutely adore a bit of piss play, uh, drinking each other's peas, golden showers, all of that. This is apparently because the giraffe, the male giraffe, he can taste, uh, I guess, things going on in there. And the male giraffe will be able to tell if the female giraffe is already pregnant. He'll be able to tell if the female giraffe is in heat just by the taste of her urine. And so he'll know if she's a viable option for him. Apparently, male giraffes have no time to waste around. They have no time for games. They just want to get straight to it. It's like, if you're already pregnant, I'm not going to have sex with you. Straight up, if you're not in heat, I'm not going to have sex with you. If you can't carry my child now, it's not happening. It's off the cards. I don't know why they're in such a rush. There must be a reason, but yeah, they do drink each other's piss. John's Bones. This is a bit of a weird one, and I kind of feel a bit scared for calling this guy out, but John's Bones, if you don't know, he is this Instagram account, and he has a collection of skulls and like bones and anything you want, any body parts. They're his. He owns them all. I think I heard that he gets his from like China or India and stuff and i also found out that there is no law that prohibits you from keeping someone else's remains in the usa provided those remains are not from a native american which is <laughs> very interesting but yeah this is really messed up because i saw one of his videos today and he's talking about this like this young child's skull that he has and it, uh, he was talking about its teeth and how its teeth are like above the mouth but that skull belonged once to a four or five year old and he's just carrying this four or five year old skull. I don't know how he like acquires them. I don't know how he gets them. I don't know who he buys them from, but he has this massive collection of people's skulls in his house and he'll just talk about them. He sells them, I'm sure. He gets paid though on TikTok for talking about people's skulls. <laughs> it's kind of freaky. It's kind of freaky. I wouldn't really recommend watching him because that kind of stuff. Maybe if you're like a goth or something. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's kind of freaky. Oh, oh yeah. Kevin wears leg injury. Uh, this is a rough one and one that I really would not recommend looking up just out of respect for Kevin Ware. I believe that he was in college basketball, maybe high school basketball. I think it was college. I'd never heard of him before and my housemate that watches a lot of basketball had never heard of him either. But after watching the video of his leg break, it's absolutely abhorrent. It must have been so painful. Even seeing the reactions of his teammates, so imagine being out there on the court. He jumps up to, I guess, block a basket and his leg, when he lands, folds inside out. It's one of the worst sports injuries I've seen. Maybe the worst. It's If you've seen Kurt Zuma's leg break, it's kind of similar to that, but I would say even worse. It bends the wrong way and it's very, very kind of like... Uh, it's one of those things that you don't, when you're watching it, you want to look away. Having said that, despite of all of this, despite of the injury, he made a full recovery, which is great for him. Glad to see he's doing well. He's playing in some league now. I don't really watch basketball, but his leg break was one of the worst things I have seen from a game of basketball. Mr. Garrison's fancy new vagina. I believe it's the first episode of the ninth season of South Park. And if you've watched this channel before, you'll know that I talk about South Park a lot. I love this show. I think Matt and Trey are geniuses of our time. They're some of the comic geniuses of our time. And yeah, I'm a massive fan. I completely adore the show. But this episode is one of the very few that I do not like. I don't like this episode. The story of the show is that Mr. Garrison is having a sex change. And it's basically a big episode about transgenderism and kind of transitioning between one body and another. And that would be fine, except when Mr. Garrison is having the sex change, they intercut video of an actual sex change taking place with this really horror-esque filter on top of it. I'm really not one for blood and I'm really not one for scalpels and scissors and anything around the lower half of your body. It's pretty freaky. It's really something that you don't want to watch. Very queasy to say at the least. 
So this is one that I beg you not to research just for your own safety, especially if you have epilepsy, please do not look this up because you might get seriously hurt. Staggering Beauty is an online game and all it is is you're greeted with this worm thing on the screen and if you move your mouse it kind of follows it and if you move your mouse really fast it goes ballistic crazy colors really really fast it can be damaging to the eyes it can be dangerous especially if you have something like epilepsy please do not look it up it could be severely dangerous the vaporeon copy pasta this is one that i kind of despair with this is one that like, I don't think I've covered copy pasta before. Um, I don't really know what it is too much, but I've read the Vaporeon copy pasta and humans are weird. <laughs> Basically, this thing is just a massive post on Reddit. At least that's where I read it. And what it is, is it's someone trying to describe why Vaporeon is the perfect Pokemon to have sex with. They say that the move set has like captivate and attract and charm and like it's a water type and stuff so you wouldn't need any lube and shit like that it, it's just straight up like who thinks of this and then who acts on it by writing it thinking they had to share this with the world <laughs> it's just a bunch of smut about vaporeon being great for sex i have no real words on it i have no real insight so i'm going to move on past this the wizard of oz's production uh, i've heard the facts about it before if you want to watch a more in-depth video on this because it is a very interesting topic go no further than implement i love his videos i think i've shouted him out before i i just love his videos i've been with him since the ytp days and the wizard of oz has to be one of the most documented films just in terms of how it was made because there was some sh going on behind the scenes here and I feel so so sorry for Judy Garland who was a victim. Her career was set up but her life was destroyed by this movie. There were some small inconveniences, stuff that you would get in any film shoot. So for example the costumes were uncomfortable, you might get that a lot but it's not really about the small things as much as it was some of the treatment towards the cast, especially young Judy Garland. She stars in one of the most iconic films of all time, she did such a great job but she was physically assaulted, she was sexually harassed, and she was prescribed amphetamines throughout the production of the film. And some say that this is eventually what led to her death many years later. Not to mention that the Wicked Witch of the West actually had toxic face paint on. This is the kind of stuff, if a film did that today, it would immediately be shut down. I believe that the actress also got burns during the production, so they had to take a couple of weeks off for that. It was just an absolute risk assessment nightmare. The film set was absolutely cursed, and I heard stories of like cast members as well being really, really rude to Garland. It's a shame because this is such an innocent, pure movie, and it was the first live action Technicolor movie in the world, if I'm not mistaken. So to hear all these stories about behind the scenes is just such a shame. Lastly, on this tier, I'm going to cover the Bad Baby Newgrounds video, which, if I am correct, is just this video that looks like a bad acid trip. It's an acid trip gone wrong. Not that I've ever done acid, but that's what I've heard. There's a bit of gore in there. There's a bit of violence. I believe that it was either taken down or like demonetized or given an 18 rating on YouTube. So it's kind of harder to find than it once was. And yeah, it's a bit gory. Based on the last video, I'm kind of just desensitized to this kind of stuff now. But we are only on the second tier, so let's move down to the third, where things are gonna get even creepier and even more disturbing. And yeah, I mean, they do. <laughs> Trust me, they do. So if you're a squeamish person, you might not like this, but I brought this up in the first Do Not Research Iceberg, and it is bot flies. Basically, they are one of the only insects in the world to use humans as a host for their mating rituals. So what a bot fly will do is it will land on you and it will inject its eggs under your skin. The eggs will then hatch and then start to eat you from inside out. It can be very, very dangerous if you don't get it sorted out very soon. Because of this, people have made removal videos where you get out the camera, you get someone who has been hit with some botfly eggs and you video taking the larva out from them. These are baby bot flies, little larva, little maggots from inside your body and people just video them coming out. It's really grim. It's really, really grim. And a sincere, do not look this up. It's just gross, man. It's just gross. Don't ask me how, but I've actually ran into kick farting before. I don't understand it. I don't understand anything on this list. But I definitely have ran into it before, and if you're wondering what it is, it's probably what you think. Just listen to the name, 
cake farting. It's that. I mean, as long as it's not hurting anyone, I mean, don't get me wrong, if I find out that you are a cake farter, I can and will judge you, but all it is is that you sit on a cake and you fart on it and then some people for some reason get sexual pleasure out of it. I don't know how, don't ask me, but it's a harmless act except for the cake. It's a bit wasteful to be fair, you know, you're wasting cake there, an entire cake. I've seen one with a big chocolate one. And I mean, yeah, it's, it's as straightforward as people fart on a cake and other people like it. Like that's, that's all we have. Uh, let's get on to the next one. Electric Retard seems to be an on again, off again webcomic. And from its description and from some of the pictures I've seen online, it's incredibly offensive. Yeah, it's known as one of the most offensive webcomics in the world. And other than that, I don't really know how to describe it. It's got frequent references to Nazism. It's got a bunch of gore and violence, just a very violent webcomic in general. It's kind of mean-spirited. It's not really got too much to it, not too much nuance or, or anything. It's just people die and just about any prohibited act anything that might be over the line anything that might be a bit sensitive it's all shown it's every single thing it was made on ms paint i believe and so you can kind of guess the uh, the art style it's very very rough but the webcomic has not had an issue since july 2020 so right now it's off again and perhaps soon we will see yet another comic surface to the top of the internet and yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say about this one. Chris Benoit is next on the list. And if you don't know his story, you're about to find out. So when you're in the public eye, people rely on you, whether or not you want it, you will become a role model. And I'm sure he is an idol to some, but back in 2007, Chris Benoit did something that would taint his legacy forever. Long story short, he murdered his wife and then his seven-year-old son, and then killed himself. The murder of your family is perhaps the worst thing you can do, especially as a father you're meant to protect your family. And Chris Benoit did the exact opposite. After he did this, they did an autopsy of his brain. They did a little examination and it's thought that his head was so severely damaged, especially his brain, that it resembled that of an 85 year old Alzheimer's patient. I think Chris Benoit would have been 30s or 40s at the time. So there is definitely a question of accountability. How mentally was he up there? And this was preceding the death of his close friend, Eddie Guerrero. And a lot of people think that this was the event to tip Chris Benoit over the edge. Since then, WWE has cut ties with him because obviously you would. And yeah, it's just a sad topic to be honest. So I'd recommend just not looking it up and, and let the situation rest, to be honest. Gangrene. Um, I'm sure that you guys have all heard this before. Gangrene is a horrible, horrible, is it an infection? It's a condition. And your skin kind of turns really black and blue and purple and red. And it's absolutely gross. Don't look up pictures online because they're grim. They're disgusting. Um, I believe it's because there is a loss of blood. Blood circulation has been disrupted, so your blood can't get to specific body parts. It's usually the hands or the feet. And yeah, they turn into this disgusting purpley black. There's clearly something going on there. The pictures are grim, so just don't research. Don't do it. Do not research. It is the title of the video. And now we get into something really, really sad. <laughs> This is the Kuawi's last song. I believe I'm pronouncing that right, maybe. The Kuawi's last song is really, really sad. The Kuawi was a bird that was on the brink of extinction for such a long time. And in 1987, David Boynton was able to capture the very last sound, the very last one that we're able to hear. He was able to capture that from the Kuawi. And basically it was singing, it was doing its little mating call to a bird that would never come because as far as we know, the Kawawi that we heard was the very last one on earth. The Kawawi had no way of knowing that it was the last one on earth, but David Boynton did. And so he replayed the song just to hear it one last time. However, hearing this, the Kawawi flew back thinking that it had heard another member of its species Unfortunately, it was just David Boynton replaying its sound back to it. And this is just really sad because this is the last. Imagine being the last of your species, but you have no clue. That Kawawi would be flying forever. It would forever be searching for its mate, a mate that would never come because all of them are dead. To this day, we have never found another Kawawi. So as far as we know, that was it. That was the very last call of a Kawawi. And it's just incredibly sad. <sighs> Rhino 
GIF. Am I allowed to show a rhino shitting on YouTube? Is that against the terms of service? <laughs> Don't look it up because it's just, is a rhino shitting. Like, is that really how you want to spend your time? You have limited time on earth. Do you want to look up a rhino taking a steamy shit? Probably not. There's something just a little bit off about people watching animals shit. If I ever had a dog, I just look away. Let it do its thing. Don't record it. And, you know, later just go scoop it up, you know. Uh, let's just say with the rhino, it just explodes out there. I mean, that thing's got to have a pretty serious digestive system. It just blows up, flies out. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say for that one. It's just an explosive shit taken by a rhino. <laughs> I just saw the next one. Sandy Cheeks. Vor. So we spoke about Vor earlier. It's the sexual attraction to like consuming things. And the Sandy Cheeks Vor is actually, to be fair, it's very well drawn, right? It's very well drawn, but such talent has been wasted. <laughs> I'm going to make it really quick, but there is a picture online of Sandy from SpongeBob with a penis. But not just any penis, it's absolutely gigantic because Sandy herself is huge. She's like Godzilla and she's got her schlong out and it's somehow sucking in a car. It's like a taxi or something, maybe. I I've forgotten the picture, but she's sucking in a car with her dick. And there's so many things that just ask me what possessed someone to make that picture and post it online. Every single turn, there's something like, wait, what, Sandy with a sucking up a car up the jap. I'm not going to spend five minutes talking on this one. I'm just going to move on. For peace of mind, you might not want to research this next one. There is nothing you can do about it, so you just have to live. This next entry is super volcano predictions. Essentially, if one of these super volcanoes decided to explode on us, it would send us back to the Stone Age. And this would be not even due to our own malpractice, right? Like we're always so scared about climate change or robots and AI taking over, war, nukes, uh, super disease. This one wouldn't even be our fault in the slightest, right? If a super volcano decided to erupt, it wouldn't be because of us, right? But if one did erupt, it is game, set, match for the human race. We're going back 5,000 years. <laughs> the one that most people are afraid of is Yellowstone. And it began about 2 million years ago. It kind of surfaced and it erupts every 600,000 to 700,000 years. But volcanoes aren't like clockwork, right? So it last erupted about 174,000 years ago. So we should have a good couple hundred thousand years to sort out the next eruption, right? Except no, because if this thing wanted to, it could erupt tomorrow or a week from now or a year from now or 10 years from now, 100 years now. It's not like it's like, oh, 650,000 years, time to go off. It doesn't work like that. It just erupts when it does. And if it does, boy howdy that thing will take humanity to its knees it would be a very bleak day for man's existence if that thing went off this one is straight up sad and it's something that you shouldn't look up just because it'll upset you it's the origins of the jackalope myth i've actually covered the jackalope at least two or three times now but i never actually ran into this piece of information about it i never delved into the reason why people thought they existed it in the first place i thought someone just thought it would be cool to put antlers and in fairness it does look really cool to put antlers on rabbits the reason some people thought that it existed in the first place though was actually a virus it was the shope papilloma virus and essentially this is a virus that causes members of the rabbit family to grow this fungus like horns from its head it must be so painful and rabbits haven't done anything wrong, obviously. They're rabbits. As a person who's once owned rabbits myself, this does hurt my heart because they're just, they're just kind of playful little, you know, they don't do anything. They're just rabbits. And this virus is taking control of its body and it must be so painful for them. So it is quite sad. On to the next tier, we're about halfway through this revisited iceberg and we have a lot of darker and more messed up stuff to get through. And it's only going to get worse from here, right? So up next, we have six digit hentai codes. I don't know if I fully grasp this one, but please do let me know if I got this right. I think these are memes and within these memes are like six digit codes that are kind of hidden throughout. And I don't know if it's legit. I don't know if you actually put them in, if it will lead you to a picture of hentai. But the idea is that you find one of these memes, you take the six digit code, you look it up and then there is some hentai. At least that's my understanding. I don't know what the hentai is, 
So maybe I shouldn't recommend you research this one. I don't know. I do not know. But I think it's these six digit codes that you look them up and then it says hentai. It's pure hentai. They're on knowyourmeme.com. So I think it might be fake, but I could not tell you for certain. Dolphin X Headless Fish. If you think back to my second entry, you might understand. You might be able to put two and two together. I'm not going to explain any further, to be honest. I don't think I need to. Dolphin X Headless Fish goes without saying. Don't look this up. Do not do it. I think you can understand what this entry is about and leave it at that. Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is so, so bliss. Do not do it. <laughs> this is a wild one, to be honest. This is the story of the Egyptian god Atum and how he made us all. So the Egyptian gods believed in creationism, I believe. You know, it all came from a god, as, as do most religions believe that some sort of higher power made the universe. Atum's, though, probably makes the most sense. Of all creation stories I've heard, <laughs> Atoms probably makes the most sense, which is weird because I'm going to get into a story now. So the belief is that Atom either sneezed or, more interestingly, ejaculated the universe into existence. The universe is a result of Atom knocking one out. This is completely true. Atom, they say, masturbated the world into existence as well as the universe. So that door behind you, the clothes on your back, the food on your plate, Sweden, it all became because Atom was having a bit of fun time and <laughs> bang, the universe existed, which to be honest, when you think about it, right, we all did. We all came from that, if you think about it. Uh, so who's to say that the universe did not also? Jiggers. So a little fact about me, I used to work in a cocktail bar and I mostly wash glasses there, but every now and then I would step up to do some cocktails. And in cocktails, things have to be quite precise. You can't just free pour. So they give you little jiggers. And what a jigger is, is it is this measuring cylinder so you can see how much you have in there. So they're usually measured in 25 and 50 milliliters. That is a shot and a double shot. Here's to say that jiggers is not what you would think it is. A jigger is actually a foot infection and it's really gross. Um, at least this kind of jigger that we're talking about, because if you look up jigger online, you're not going to get the bartending tools. You're going to get gross foot infections. I would say do not research, but I know some of you sickos will anyway, because some of you guys are like, oh, don't research. You know what? Perfect research material. But that's all a jigger is. It's, it's a gross foot infection that I would not recommend looking up. Then that's on you. I'm washing my hands clean of it. Yeah, okay, I knew this was going to be a rough one. Uh, from the moment I laid eyes on the word latrine sloth, I knew that this was not going to be a fun experience. And if you don't know what a latrine is, it's one of those old-timey toilets, which is basically a glorified hole in the ground. I think the Romans used to use them a lot. They're kind of like a toilet, but then instead of having plumbing or any water in them, it's just a hole. And so it's just piling on and this is where latrine sloths come in. They just love human excrement. They can't get enough of the stuff. I don't know if it's the flavor. I don't know if it's the texture, but they just they just lick their lips every time they see some. <laughs> and so some will go into latrines and they will, I guess, go inside and wait. And that's just their existence. They have a trillion to one odds of being born in the first place. And they spend that existence just by sitting in a hole in the ground waiting to be shat on so they can eat the like, this is just nature. This is nature being gross, but it's nature at the end of the day. So you don't need to research this one. I, I've basically already told you everything there is to know. The Tale of Terrare. Um, if you have not seen the wonderful video by Salmonella on the subject, I highly recommend you do because he will be able to explain the whole story way better than I will. But basically, Terrare was the man who had the ultra stomach. He was always hungry. If there's one thing you need to know about this man, he was always hungry. And I believe that he could just eat everything, right? He just opened his mouth, opened his gullet, and then things would just go down. And his appetite was insatiable. It could never be quenched. Long story short, he ate a bunch of stuff that he really shouldn't have. The most disturbing of which was potentially a toddler. He potentially ate a toddler alive, which is incredible to think. I mean, that must be the only time in history that a person has eaten another human alive just by like 
chucking him down because there was a toddler that went missing at a hospital that he was staying at and he was asked to leave. As far as I know, the toddler was never found again and so people think that Tarare ate it as well as a bunch of animals to be honest, he ate a lot of animals alive. But yeah, yeah, the toddler was never found so this story is kind of sad. <sighs> And yeah, I mean, we'll get on to the next one. Okay, so the preparation of Unagi. This is something that I wasn't actually able to find any videos of on YouTube because they might be taken down because it is quite disturbing and violent. But I could find a picture of it on Google. And if you don't know, Unagi is an eel. And the way to prepare this apparently is to nail its head onto a board whilst it's alive. I think I've made my position on the treatment of animals that you might eat before they die very clear. For me personally, the humane thing to do is just to kill it, chop its neck, bang, one hit, done. I don't know how long the eel lasts once its head is nailed onto the board. But I can't imagine it's very long because eventually it will just get its neck cut. Let's just say I'm not a fan and although I wasn't able to find a video of them getting their heads nailed onto boards, I've watched enough videos of decapitated eels now to satisfy that desire. I don't need to see it at all. And I recommend that you don't either. So yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's that. Next year now, Calculus Bridge is the next entry and it's not what you think. It's not anything from school. It's no mathematics and it's also no architecture. There's nothing to do with bridges or calculus. Calculus, I believe, is another word for tartar and it's this really gross buildup of tartar on the teeth and I think it hardens eventually and it's grim. It's straight up you can get this if you don't brush Millie for weeks. So it is actually quite common provided that you don't have good dental hygiene. So it's got to be something that you stay on top of, especially us Brits, you know what we're like for our teeth. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I think that's all I'll say for that one. Flashback to us talking about the Vaporeon copy pasta. Our next entry is quite similar, but it's way worse, right? It was written by QWERTYSUN96. And the thing that separates this from the Vaporeon copy pasta is that Vaporeon does not exist, dolphins do. And it seems as if this person is extremely sexually attracted to dolphins. It would not surprise me in the slightest if they were. They seem to know the intricacies of dolphin sexuality to the point where when you're reading it, you question, how do they know so much? Has this guy done something to a dolphin? It wouldn't surprise me if the answer was yes. I'll leave it at that. Obviously, this is illegal and not only that, but it's just so graphic and detail they go so far into it it's something that no one asked for it's also obscure as well the post i saw did not have many reactions to it i mean it could be baiting people but this is the kind of thing that it's like okay something's going on here i am a little bit worried a little bit concerned don't read it because this guy goes into some intense detail about dolphins and and their sex organs and and their sexuality so yeah i think i'll move on to the next one because uh, we are definitely in the dark deepest parts of the iceberg now everything from here on out including this i would say is very taboo very dark so yeah let's get to the next one fulmiant human papillomavirus this is if you go down memory lane we kind of spoke about jackalopes before and how rabbits sometimes get i believe their version of it this is the human equivalent and it seems very painful these are just some severe warts that kind of grow on people and they look incredible incredibly incredibly painful it's almost a last of us style kind of skin elision is that what you say elision where their arms or legs or or even faces start to turn into like these massive warts and massive funguses i can't even describe it but it is like man and fungus has collided i do feel so sorry for the people that have caught this virus and this isn't hpv the fulmiant human papilloma virus uh this i believe the fulmiant is the warts one on the outside hpv is obviously very different and i found out whilst researching that most people get it even people that are sexually active with only one or two partners in their entire lives people with very few sexual partners most of the most people at some point will catch HPV, um, which is kind of weird to think about. But I believe that it is different to the fulmiant human papillomavirus. So yeah, I think I'll, I'll just do a little two for one there. I might get a visit from the police for this, but pressure cooker bombs 
apparently if you at some point had looked this up the police will start monitoring uh what you look at and maybe the reason that it's on the iceberg is just the idea that we're constantly surveyed that we can be tracked and traced online even if we don't choose to be but apparently if you look up pressure cooker bombs the police will give you a little visit so uh, i'm expecting a knock on my door any minute now and yeah, I think I'll move down to the next and it's very, very bad. This one really, really annoys me. I had no idea that VI ASMR existed and it's an interesting moral debate. It is an interesting moral debate, but obviously if you're an animal lover, I would recommend skipping this one. It, it is very over the line. It is very disturbed. So this is a moral debate that there is no right or wrong answer to. Um, and even I will admit I have my strong beliefs, but at the same time, they're only my beliefs, right? So I do eat meat. I eat a lot of chicken and I eat a fair amount of fish. As for anything to do with pig, cow, sheep, and like anything else, I've basically cut that out of my diet. I'll eat it on rare occasions or if I'm drunk. Um, but I would say no more than once a week. So I'm trying to do my small part for not only my own health, but also that of the environment, right? I think that most people would say that this is fair. Obviously, you would have some extremist vegans who say I'm a cancer to the earth, and you might have some extreme people on the other side that say I'm a soy boy because I don't eat beef. It's just not really my thing right now, to be honest. I do love it though. I love a burger. If I go into a restaurant, I'm having a burger. Either way, I don't care. People on either side, I couldn't care less. VI ASMR, however, she will eat literally anything. She's eaten turtles, goat head, pig uterus, duck embryo, and most worryingly to me at least, dog leg. So the question is, where do we draw the line? What is food and what is not food? Is Do I have a leg to stand on because I will eat chicken and I will eat fish? Do I have a leg to stand on to criticize this woman who eats dog? I think yes, <laughs> personally. But at the same time, maybe there is an argument to say that I am being hypocritical. I personally would say that chickens, cows and pigs have been bred to be eaten, whereas dogs have been bred to be man's best friend. Dogs are friend, not food, in my opinion. But her channel, she will eat anything. She will eat absolutely anything. The things I named were just things I could find in like a two minute kind of search of like titles and and I mean, sh she will eat anything. Dog leg is, is abhorrent, to be honest. I should be more outraged than I am, but... At this point, I have been so desensitized to this kind of stuff that I'm just not as angry as I once was. I say dogs are friends, but I eat chicken. And is that any better? I don't know. I still condemn it to the highest order. VI ASMR, you're an awful human in my eyes. Eating dogs is is absolutely sickening to me. So just don't look her up because you will get sad, um, especially if you're a dog lover. And I don't know, I'll, I'll probably get a lot of hate for this entry, but I don't really care. So <laughs> AIDS is no picnic PSA. I believe I spoke about this one before in the creepy advertisements and PSAs iceberg. This is just really disturbing, to be honest. This is a really raw look at what AIDS might be. It's a bit of a boogeyman. I don't know. I mean, to be honest, I don't know. I don't have AIDS. I've never had AIDS. I pray that I won't ever have AIDS. I don't know how painful it can become, especially when this came out, though I'm sure that science and technology wasn't really as advanced as it is now. It seems to be late 90s, early 2000s. This PSA is straight up spook city. I really would not recommend looking it up because it's all kinds of, of scary. I mean, it is October, but at the same time, this thing is just not good. If you're not a fan of creepy crawlies, I would recommend looking away because this next entry is kind of, oh my God, if I found this in my house, I would be freaking out. This is the Creatinos gangus, and this is absolutely terrifying. It's found in Southeast Asia and, wait for it, Australia. <laughs> you find it on Australia and Southeast Asia. It's generally a scary bug. It's huge, but I don't believe it is harmful. At least I don't think it is. So be that as it may, I'm going to move on. Okay, yeah, from here on out, I think this is, I want to say this is a new tier, and from here on out, this is the final tier. This stuff is straight up, please do not look this up, because it's either sad or disgusting, or you will remember it for a long time. Um, okay, so this one to me is, is just very freaky. It's Vladimir Komarov's funeral image, and it does send chills down my spine. If you don't know who Vladimir Komarov was, he was a cosmonaut and he was the first ever person to die in outer space. I think he was coming down from outer space and his parachute didn't work and he died in a fiery blaze. And there is a picture of his funeral 
and he is literally just a piece of hardened ash. And it's incredibly sad to think that that was once a great man, not only just a regular man, he was an astronaut, he was a cosmonaut. And it does make you think that we are such fragile beings in the grand scheme of things. And, and I couldn't imagine his family and stuff seeing him like that, just a pile of hardened ash would be so saddening. Him crashing down to earth is, is definitely just, it's just sad. So that's all I had to say for that one. Let's move on. There's a lot more stuff down here that is extremely existential and I don't know if I can explain them. So there's one called Strangelets, I think. No, it's Vacuum Decay. So Vacuum Decay, there is a Kurtz Gazette video on it. So go watch that one. Uh, he will be able to explain it way better than me because Kurtz Gazette's videos are awesome. Like, like they're so well researched, uh, unlike this. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you want to hear anything about Vacuum Decay, go to Kurtz Gazette because I literally, I do not have the mental capacity to explain this. I don't understand it in the slightest. Same thing with Strangelets. I do not understand Strangelets either. So I can't really speak for these two. Okay, this one I am being sincere. Of all of the entries to not look up, this is the one I say please do not. It is called the Face Split Dive, and based on that you can probably assume what I'm about to talk about. Now that I've brought it up, I kind of feel like a few of you might, but I will explain it so that you don't have to, right? So it's this video of a seaside, I think. There's a big wall, and there's some water underneath, and there's this little platform made of like brick or stone, I think it's a stone, uh, right there. And video goes, this boy jumps off, he cannibals, he does it right. There's this next boy. He must have only been, he looked very young. He looked, I'm going to say like a teenager, maybe young adult, jumps in and he uh, doesn't land in the water. He goes face first and hits the, uh, the stone and he just floats in the water and blood's going everywhere in the water. Immediately, within seconds, someone's out there to like drag him and, and save him. And then it cuts to a video of some doctors operating on him and his face has been split open. I don't know if he survived. I've got to assume that he didn't because that would be severe. I mean, he, he basically had no face. It is one of the most frightening things I've ever seen and it's going to be something that I will not forget for a long time. Please do not look this up, please. That's all I have to say for that one. With that said, when I was writing this script, I didn't anticipate that that would get very real and very heavy. And I, I don't mean any disrespect or anything, but the next tier we have F, T, Z, P, L, T, C's foot fetish is probably a really bad thing that I'm putting this next to what an abhorrent video the last one was. If you don't know, this guy's an iceberg shark creator and now thousands of people have watched a video calling you out, F, T, Z, P, L, T, C. Uh, he has a foot fetish and yeah, to be honest, I kind of feel bad for doing that, to be honest, like putting such a, a, a jokey entry after the, the, the horrid one. Um, but I'm just going to get through the rest of this iceberg. So don't research his foot fetish, please. Also don't research the scientific name for pigs or Pokemon 591. Don't do it because you will be pleasantly unsurprised and you will be very annoyed. And if you remember to the last video, most of the comments on my last video were about the ending, the very final entry. I still get comments today reminding me daily of what I did and what I said. If you want any context, just look to the last video and look to the very end. Uh, I would recommend not doing it because again, ignorance is bliss. You don't want to see what I have behind the curtain for this very last one. This is the depths of the iceberg. Please, you cannot blame me. Basically, you cannot blame me for seeing this. Click away now if you want to. If not, you can stay on. Here we go. You just got coconut mauled. Share this with all your friends to totally coconut maul them. Get fucking coconut mauled, biatch. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, please do subscribe. I have a bunch of others that maybe not are this dark, but 
to be honest, recently I've been getting into some really dark topics, to be fair. Uh, there's a part one if you haven't seen it already, and it's a lot longer. It's not as good, this is definitely better, but it definitely goes into some very dark themes as well, and most of the iceberg is there, it's a little bit longer as well. If this video gets 20,000 likes, I'll do a shoulder reveal. I'm sure you guys want to see these bad boys. And if you want to follow me on stuff, I have an Instagram, I have a Twitter, I have a Twitch, and I have a Discord. All of them are linked in the description. If you're a content creator, I'm doing a documentary right now, so please do email me at foxkimbo at gmail.com if you want to be a part of it. So that'd be really cool, especially if you have a bit of a following, I'd love to get in touch. I also have a Patreon, which I should probably do my shout outs now. Cage101101, Chris M and Brandon. You guys are absolute legends. Thank you so much for supporting me all this time. Speaking of shout outs, I have four people to shout out today. FTZ PLTC with the foot fetish, Walrus64, Fergie, the one and only, and Pen and Hex Studios. You guys are awesome. Thank you very, very much for your work. I have many, many views and many, many subscribers to thank you guys for. Uh, you've been absolutely incredible just making these icebergs for us to cover. And yeah, I mean, thank you so, so much for that. That's all I have to say. So finally, please let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see me do next because I'm only 78 videos in and I'm already out of ideas. Thank you for watching.